Welcome to Leavesden Studios, formerly an aircraft hangar. This place has now played host to films as diverse as Batman and Sherlock Holmes, but for the last 10 years has been the home to the stars of the world's most successful movie series, Harry Potter. And now, the magic lives on. If after seven books, eight films, the mugs, the t-shirts, maybe even your own broomstick, you still can't get enough of Harry Potter, well, you may be in luck. Why? Well, that will soon become clear because, as Albus Dumbledore himself once said, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. I got a real treat for you today. Over the next half hour, I'll be taking you on a magical mystery tour of some of the most iconic sets and backdrops from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. Welcome to Hogwarts. A unique experience, it's plain to see that the journey of the cast and crew is as much a story as the films themselves. It's home to us. You know, we were there for 10 years and it was lovely seeing those amazing sets every day. Wow! I was so excited. I must have been exhausted, but I was, you know, I was like 10 or 11 when I did that first movie, but it just kind of like flew by. It was, it was incredible. When we start a new scene, usually it's, it, it does kind of take your breath away, kind of um, just, yeah, I mean, the sets are amazing and, and just you really feel like you're there. Uh, a typical day at Leavesden is not like a typical day on most film sets because there are so many actors involved. Whenever I felt sorry for myself for not having any lines, I'd look over and I'd see Emma Thompson, I'd see Jim Broadbent, and I'd think, well, they've got Oscars and they've got no lines, so it's an all right day. Cut and action. Out of my way, Potter. And then you would start setting the scene out and then you'd disappear, go back to your trailer while they lit the thing to look like uh, a Rembrandt painting and we ate chocolate. Some tasty pumpkin, perhaps? one of the favourite foods of the man whose home I am now standing inside. Now, it only takes an amateur Potter enthusiast to recognise this place as Hagrid's hut, home to the friendly giant played by Robbie Coltrane, who was in every single one of the Potter films. Now, this place, once you get this close to it, astounds with the level of detail. It's utterly amazing. And what's equally amazing is this entire structure was at one stage taken down and moved 2,000 feet up a mountain in Scotland, all for a few scenes in The Prisoner of Azkaban. Thankfully, they have now brought it back to here in Leavesden, where you can have a look at it up close yourself. Someone sees you outside the castle this time of night, you'll be in trouble, big trouble, particularly you, Harry. I'm with you in a moment. <laughs> quick, quick. It'll be fine. It'll be OK. Now, this place has been home to a fair few stories, both on the camera and, indeed, off. It was filming here that Robbie Coltrane somehow, in costume, managed to get a fruit bat stuck in his magnificent beard, which is exactly the fear I have and why I don't grow a beard. OK, good. First one yet. OK, we'll reset once more. I owe everything to the people that I've worked with over the last... 10 years, whether it's the crew, the cast. I certainly have a huge amount to thank David Yates for. He, he was kind of the guy who um, embedded the passion for filmmaking in me. Before that, I was a little unsure whether it was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It's very strange, actually, and very surreal, because when you finish the movie, you kind of figure that it's over. But then as you leave the film set and you leave the studio and you go out into the world, you're so aware that Potter is always present, because people, when they know what you do or what you've done, always want to talk about the wonderful stories, the wonderful characters that Joe Rowling's created. That's it, that's it. Very good, Mark. That was smashing. I used to have this thing, and it, we all did all, all of that, that little gang, and we're, and we're quite close because of that experience. First of all, I'd go and have a sort of healthy breakfast. Like I'd have some, some yoghurt and some porridge, and then go back and have kippers, and bacon, and sausage. Meanwhile, you realise it's still only half past six, and you're not working till eight o'clock. You've got to have a lie down. And then somebody knock on your door like... It's quite mad doing it because day to day you might do one scene that's right at the beginning of the first part and then the next day you'll be doing something that's right at the end of the second. Oh, oh you've just got it. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah.
So it's kind of, it creates a kind of friendly atmosphere of chaos, which is, which is rather enjoyable, actually. It was often tough not to laugh. There are my acting heroes, and we're all dressed as wizards, and we're waving wands at each other. I was, to be honest with you, completely terrified of most of the adult actors. It took me more, it took me about six years to muster the, the courage to say anything more than good morning, especially to Alan Rickman for some reason. I don't know why, but he was a fairly um, scary guy to, when I was younger. And it was so nice when I did finally pluck up the courage to ask him questions about Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, uh, you know, my childhood film. That's one of the nicest things for me is certainly being able to grow up here and you know, uh, get a chance to speak some, to some of my heroes that I've looked up to all my life. Ginny, what is it? I was only wondering when Harry got here. What? Harry? Harry who? Harry Potter, of course. I think I'd know if Harry Potter was at my house, wouldn't I? Do you ever fancy a bowl of cheery owls? No? Maybe some pixie puffs, then? This place is amazing. Every cupboard you open, every drawer you open, there's something in there. Uh, now, this is obviously the Weasley's Kitchen at the Borough. This is one of the interactive sets. Uh, when you come down here, you'll be able to swish a wand and see a carrot chop itself. There'll be self-ironing ironing and self-knitting scarves. And basically, every job that you wouldn't want to do yourself, apart from the knitting, which can be quite therapeutic. And over at this side, look, the clock that tells the Weasley family where every member is. Uh, says George is uh, currently at home, which means we better scarper. This is his kitchen. Morning. The sets never fail to take your breath away. Most film sets, you build a, a small fraction of uh, what will end up on screen, which will be then painted in later on glass or something. But because these sets were going to stand for movie after movie, they built all of the Ministry of Magic. They built the whole Great Hall. And these things had, well, you know, I don't want to spoil this for the public, but most sets don't have, they're missing one wall, they're missing a roof or something. And uh, these are complete. <laughs> So many ways to get around the Harry Potter universe. You want to go to the Quidditch World Cup, you hold on to a boot. You want to get to platform nine and three quarters, run through a wall. I just flushed myself down a toilet to arrive here at the Ministry of Magic. Why am I here? Well, I've got an appointment with a rather scary lady. What on earth are you doing, Albert? You're lying, Dolores. And one mustn't tell lies. Stupid! It's Harry Potter! It is, isn't it? This will be fun to tell the kids. Who would live in a rather bling office like this? Go on, have a guess. Deathly Hallows Part 1? Yes, Dolores Umbridge. This is her office at the Ministry of Magic. Seen as Harry searches through that very drawer for a horcrux. It's certainly got the Umbridge touch. We have all the plates with the cats on that actually move in the films. Now, every single one of those cats, 40 of them there were, that were photographed for the plates, were then given good homes, but the owners were never told that their cats had been immortalised in Harry Potter. So you should come down here, take a look. One of them could be yours. As we uh, take a walk to that door, you will know what is attached to the far side of Dolores Umbridge's office door. Yes, Mad-Eye Moody's eye. On the count of three! Exactly like I said. Hold tight, Harry. One. Two. Three. Much of the on-screen magic is, well, just that. Magic, because of the skill and imagination of the special effects team. Supervisor John Richardson is the creative force behind some of the series' best-loved sequences. Let's start at the beginning. What was it like for you on a personal level working on the Harry Potter series? It was stunning because we got to do all sorts of great things like build snake doors and flying brooms and flying cars and motorbikes and all sorts of things. What was your day involved? I guess it would be different every day. It was so varied. One of the funnier things we had to do was make all the potions that the kids had to drink. I believe you're familiar with this particular brew. A polyjuice potion yeah. was a combination of vegetable soup, uh, coloured dye, a little bit of dry ice underneath it. And they had to drink this 
putrid stuff. <laughs> For those of you who haven't taken Polyjuice Potion before, fair warning, it tastes like goblin piss. I have lots of experiences with that, do you, Maddo? Just trying to diffuse the tension. Identical. All the things you've created, is there one that you are most proud of to this day? I love the flying Anglia from Harry Potter 2, from the Chamber of Secrets. Um, and I love the snake door behind me. I was just saying, the snake door where it, uh, the snake comes yeah. around, I thought that was uh, CGI. Yeah, well, a lot of people do, which I suppose in some small way is a compliment. Harry talks in his sleep. Have you noticed? No, of course not. And the other thing that was great because it was an ongoing thing throughout the films were the broomsticks. I mean, we built the broomsticks originally to fly small children who were 10 years old and weighed 120 pounds and ended up flying great big beefy death eaters who weighed uh, 14 or 15 stones. Hagrid, we have to help the others. I can't do that, Harry. Mad Eye's orders! What was the most memorable reaction from the young cast? And I, I guess it was probably more so when they were when they were younger, when they saw the creations for the first time. This broomstick went up in the air on a big, what we call a six-axis motion base, which used to fly them electronically. Mm -hmm. So to them, it was a fairground ride. All the time they were being filmed, they were moving through the air, and sometimes quite violently. I think they used to love coming down. Coming up, more on-set action from the cast and crew of Harry Potter than you can shake a wand at. See you on the other side.